This video is brought to you by the Guitar Skyhook. Hi there everyone and welcome to Artist Talks. Artist Talks is a slow TV talk show where I'll be having different artists visiting me in my tiny attic studio to talk about their career. Today we're going to meet a guy that has had guitar playing as a guiding star throughout his life. This has brought him some drastic decisions and career moves from he was a kid till this day. He has been on stage with names like Robert Palmer, David Sanborn, Mark King and Chaka Khan. He has been doing a lot of TV work as a musician and as a musical director. He has released several solo albums and he has been a record producer for other artists as well as being a musical teacher and writing books about guitar playing. Now he's also running his own YouTube channel with tips and tricks on how to become a better guitar player. I would like to say welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. So good to see you. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to have a little talk about you and your career. Okay. So I'd like to start asking you, how did you get into music for a start? Well, it was uh, such a bad thing as uh, jealousy and um, I was about four years old and I was sleeping in the middle of the day, taking a little nap. And then I woke up and I was, I grew up in a really small village in the countryside. And I could hear it was like the whole town was all uh, in, in, yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in the living room. And I could hear, oh, something special is going on. So I woke up and I ran into the living room. And I ran directly into the back of a, uh, the head of a guitar uh, because my big brother has just bought an electric guitar. And I was just, I got so jealous. Yeah. I thought, I want that. I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that community. And it happened within seconds. Mm -hmm. And then my parents, uh, they thought, okay, we have to figure this out. So they found like a kid's guitar and it could tune, it could stay in tune. And I got that and I could practice for fun, but it was like, it wasn't a big deal. I mean, I was playing with toy cars and I was playing football and then I had this guitar and of course I had Lego. I'm, I'm Danish, so I had Lego. <laughs> and, uh, but every time it was rainy and couldn't play football, well, I ended up playing guitar. And then when I was around 10 years old, I was allowed to buy a guitar for some savings I had from my childhood money or mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it's called in English mm -hmm. but uh, gifts I got from my grandmom and s stuff like that and then I got this uh, electric guitar and I started to practice a little more um, and th then my dad he my dad he was a potter uh, internationally acclaimed potter and mm -hmm. art painter and stuff like that and uh, he also had a guitar and could mm -hmm play like five chords or something mm -hmm. uh, and he wrote some songs and he performed with that he loved to be on stage and performing mm -hmm. and, uh, so uh, whenever he was invited to come to play somewhere he said oh I, I bring my son so he brought me and my big brother who was 10 years older than me and then I played do, 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 do. you could do that at the I, age I, of yeah, 10 at 10 I could mm -hmm. but it was about that yeah uh, and then uh, my big brother was soloing, and then I got used to perform that mm. way. Uh, I learned a really difficult jazz song that I that I could play, and my dad could sing to, along mm. to that. And and then later on, when I was around thirteen, I was invited to play in the first band, mm. and then I should also play solo. I was scared. Yeah. And went to my big brother and said, "I'm supposed yeah. to play solo. What what should I do?" Oh, and he draw his hand. Mm. I said, oh, you're supposed to use this finger for this, this finger for that. Here's a pick, practice that. And when you learn the pentatonic scale, you can improvise. So you had a teacher in the house? Yeah, I had a teacher in your house. And mm. then about the same time, my, my brother, he, uh, he invited me to an Eric Clapton con concert in, yeah. in Copenhagen. And uh, recently I saw the set plan for the mm. concert, or the, for the show. And... I could see the second song was Key to the Highway mm -hmm. and it was that song that changed my life because when I heard that I just realized, oh my god, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And he could improvise for hours, mm -hmm. it felt like hours, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And when I left the concert hall with my brother, I, s I told him, uh, he asked me, oh, mm -hmm. did you like it, Soren? And I said, yeah, 
I want to play guitar like him. And my big brother said, yeah, well. Then you have to practice a lot. And I said, and I truly remember holding my, my big brother's hand. I mean, I was 10 or 12. I was in Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. Oh, scary stuff for, for a country guy, yeah. side kid. And I could still remember, oh, I promised myself, then I'm going to practice a lot. And I mean, the way I'm raised is, uh, it's, it was kind of strict. So mm -hmm. if I decided to practice a lot, mm -hmm. I was about to practice a lot. Mm -hmm. And it took on and I started practicing more seriously. And then the summer holiday before uh, we started in high school, I was allowed to buy my first real guitar, a Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top. Oh. Uh, and uh, all my friends went on holiday. I went upstairs and practiced guitar for for seven weeks in a row. Or it felt like seven weeks at least. <laughs> uh, and it was fantastic. And when I returned to to school and all the new classmates, they started talking about, oh, I want to be an architect, or no, I want to be a dentist, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just thought, oh. I just want to go home and practice guitar. <laughs> so it, it wasn't a choice. That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't a choice. It was more, that's, it, it felt natural. And um, that way I just started practicing and started uh, dreaming of living by playing music. You told us that you were to uh, Eric Clapton concert, but uh, what kind of music did you listen to before that? I mean, my big brother, he was really into blues, so uh, blues and the Beatles, and of course, mm -hmm. he was st he started playing in band when he got his guitar, mm -hmm. so, and they were playing a lot of Beatles stuff, so mm -hmm. I heard that, but mainly he was playing B.B. King, Albert King, stuff like that when, when we were back home, so when I got my first tape recorder, I was allowed to borrow one of his tapes, and it was B.B. King, and, mm -hmm. and and also he got a record with B.B. King and Bobby Boo Bland live, mm -hmm. and it was like mind-blowing, whoa, yeah. how can they do that and interact and jam on stage, and it was so spontaneous, I was just, oh man, this is life. So uh, for many years I thought, I want to be a blues guitar player. Mm -hmm. And then I started maybe being aware of, oh, maybe there was something else I couldn't decide what I wanted to learn. Uh, and then my big brother, he gave me a book, Mickey Baker's Chord Fundamental. Yeah, I, I, can't, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Mickey Baker at least, a book with some jazz chords. Yeah. Later on I've learned it's, it's the same book that Robin Ford learned to play all his chords from. So. It must be a good book. <laughs> uh, it, at least that was some of the material I could find on, mm. on more advanced courts at that time because yeah. it was long before Google and stuff like that. Mm. And, um, and then at the same time as I, I was figuring all these new courts and mm. stuff out, I was starting to take some lessons on music theory. Mm. And at the same time there was... Uh, well-known Danish uh, trumpet player who's mm. playing old school New Orleans stuff. Uh, stuff. Uh, they moved pretty close to where my family lived. So they suddenly one day they knocked on the door and said, hey, we know you're an artist family. So is uh, Thais is playing trumpet. Uh, we want to get to know you. And then they came in and uh, my dad started bragging about, oh, Soren, he's so talented, he's playing the guitar. And they said, oh, mm. yeah, we heard that story mm. before. Mm. Yeah, cool. And then uh, they could sense that I was serious mm. about mm. my guitar and said, oh, maybe you want to join. Tys is going to the studio mm. in, in a short time to do a record. Maybe you want to go one day, just one day to Copenhagen and mm. see what's going on. Mm. And then I went together with them to a Sweet Silence studio. That's top of the pop. Yeah, Metallica been there, yeah, yeah. and actually it was Fleming who was uh, producing. Rasmussen, yeah, yeah. Uh, who has produced uh, Metallica? He was mm. the engineer for this session, mm. so I went to to Tyson and, and and to the studio. I was just blown away. Mm. What is this? The whole universe mm. and the way all the musicians interacted, and it was really oh, it's so nice and relaxed. Oh yeah, we have to record and let mm. me hear you guitar and stuff like that. And it was Paul Helberg, a really, really respected Danish guitar mm. player, who was booked for the session. Mm. I was just, he, he had bought a Gibson Gold Top as well. I was just, oh, look at that. <laughs> so I could mirror some, some yeah. of his identity mm. in, in where I was. And I, I decided, 
but the, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. How 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 did Paul uh, end in in this session? Oh, they called him to to ask to, and and then started talk to him, talking to him and, and said, do do this often? Yeah, and tomorrow I'm playing on this session with another guy. I said, mm -hmm. I want to do that time yeah. kind of job. So instead of dreaming about being Eric Clapton playing blues, I started. I want to be able to play that kind of sessions and other kind of sessions. Mm -hmm. So that was starting to be some kind of goal for me to be mm -hmm. able to be a hired gun and incitement for diff yeah. different acts and different periods. Must have been so fantastic to be in the studio at that age. I remember. I ended up being there the whole whole. I, I don't know how many days they had in the studio. I, every day I took yeah. to the studio. Yeah. And next time, when are you going to do a new mm. new album? Yeah. Oh, it's, it will take a while. I want to go. I want to go. I was yeah. so hooked. I was yeah. really. I was. All right. We'll have a short break to tell you about our sponsor, the Guitar Skyhook. A skyhook is a new and discreet way to hang your guitar on a wall. Use a strap button on the back of the guitar. If you don't have one on your guitar yet, the Skyhook comes with one for you to mount. Find more information on the website skyhook.dk. So you're not uh, into this band thing in the sense you're more like, I don't want to be in a band, I want to be a studio musician. I played in bands uh, mm -hmm. and I thought it was fun and it was nice. I mean, the whole uh, get together with some friends and becoming friends while you're on tour, I, I like that fact. Um, but somehow I had a dream of, of being able to play whatever you were asked to play. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, it must be fantastic. Uh, and then some of my, not my parents, but maybe my mom's sister or brother started to me, maybe you should go to the conservatory, mm. maybe you should take some kind of education. Mm. But at that time it was only like traditional conservatory, oh, meaning yeah. classical music, you had to learn piano. I said, mm. I don't want to practice for years to play a classical piece on piano mm. because I want to play some mm. really groovy stuff on my yeah. guitar instead of practicing it. So, so uh, at least aunts and uncles were a bit nervous for me for some years because I, did, I refused to go to the conservatory. I just yeah. practiced and yeah. practiced a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so you stayed at home, had a cheap living and uh, rehearsed at your parents? Uh, yeah, while till I was around 18, 19 or something. Uh, and then I moved to Copenhagen. Yeah. First I took to like, in, in Denmark we have this uh, directly translated uh, high school, but it's mm. not what we mean about high school in traditional ways. Uh, but it's like a half a year of... of Concentrated uh, environment around a certain spec like music or something. Whoa, yeah. I'm glad you can explain because <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, so I went to, a, to, a, to, a, to this type of school for half a year and everybody was, oh, you're going to move. Mm. Of course, you're moving to Copenhagen and going to be a professional musician. Mm. I thought, yeah. And then I moved to Copenhagen <laughs> and nothing happened. I mean, I went out to listen to music every single night. Mm. Every morning, up practicing, out listening to music again, and luckily because did you have a job at that time as well? How did um, you make a living? Yeah, I started. Uh, I started, if um, if possible, some kindergartens called mm -hmm. me and said, mm -hmm. "Oh, we need oh, help yeah. for one day or yeah. two days, yeah. three days or something like that." And else at that time, you were f actually allowed to have some time s seeking for a job. Okay. And the government would help you mm -hmm. financial for for a period, mm -hmm. and then uh, every time I went to uh, talk to the authorities and mm -hmm. say, "What kind of job do you want?" Mm -hmm. Oh, I come from a family that's really into art, so I want to work, work at a museum mm -hmm. or something with paintings or pottery. Mm -hmm. You say, "We don't have that kind," of, but we will remember you if it oh, shows up. Like, so and at that time, so yeah. yeah, so I was allowed to look for a job at yeah. a museum for while I was practicing really, really hard. Yeah. And then um, I was starting getting disappointed because nothing happened. Mm. And um, I went to one of the guitar players who was really in demand when I moved to Copenhagen, mm. Jakob Olsen, yeah. really great guy. One day I went up to him and said, uh, would you consider giving me a lesson? Maybe 
several lessons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course we can do that. I've seen you in the crowd for mm. almost every night <laughs> whenever he played. I was in there. <laughs> um, so of course we can do it. Oh, have you seen? Okay. Uh, come next week, and we made an appointment. And I came next week, and I was nervous. I really, it was it was scary. And he was come on in, and mm. it was great. And I asked him, hey, would would you consider teaching me again next week? Or no. No. I said, no. But maybe the week after? No. no. I said, but, but I, I, was, I felt really, well, I, did, I didn't pass the examination. No. Or but he said, I want to drink some coffee with you. Uh, because I think this type of com- conversation we have is very inspiring. So come next week and we can have some coffee and then we can. So he started uh, being like uh, mentoring and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So he was really inspiring that way. And then I started hanging with another guitar player who was every time I said, Oh, they are looking for a guitar player. Maybe I should apply for that. Mm. Every time he, either Jakob or Trolls, they got the <laughs> guitar. Trolls yeah. 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 Great, amazing guitar yeah. player. Yeah. Every time I was like, Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I talked a lot to them, and told to, uh, his told to said, uh, "It's weird that you don't have any gigs because mm. you you know a lot of music theory, mm. and you can play a lot of different styles, and you mm. can read music." And yeah, I was really disappointed. And then Trolls had so much to do, so at one time he said, "I had to go for some up holiday, mm. and I have this rehearsal for a, a, a Danish stand-up act called mm. Inyetre." Mm. Uh, I have some rehearsal for a musical. Would you consider taking the rehearsals? And then I get back home, and then I'll play the show. And then you can stop every time mm. I'm going for another gig. Like, oh, that would be a great opportunity. Mm. And then I was introduced to this uh, musical director, Jan mm. Gesel. Mm. And, uh, and that was the first real serious job I had. Mm. I mean, getting a schedule, showing up, Falconia Center at 9 o'clock, mm. practicing 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock, whatever. But you, you love structure, so actually it was kind of what you were made to. It was exactly my dream. Mm. I mean, and from playing in different bands and not, is this the right? Mm. Suddenly, this is what I meant. Mm. This is what I was looking for. So showing up 9 o'clock, being prepared, have everything ready, I'm here. Mm. And of course, uh, the other guys in the band said, oh, that's a nice uh, sub we're having here mm. because he's prepared, practice everything, mm. nine o'clock, ready. Oh my God, no. Uh, he's a good guy, he's prepared, sitting here at nine o'clock, ready. So, uh, okay, and then we actually we realized that the music was pretty tough. It was mm. actually really difficult. Mm. Uh, a lot of the guitar parts were written on piano, so there was a lot of re- weird chords yeah. going on, difficult to read. Meaning that uh, within two or three days, Jan, he decided to say, oh, the guys who are taking the rehearsals mm-hmm. here, the, that's the, 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 the team for, for doing the session with the recording for the album and doing the first three weeks of the show or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that, that ended up being my first real serious professional recording and first album I participated on. Mm-hmm. And uh, then... Uh, I had some great months learning a lot from these guys and really it was motivating because oh I was on the right path, I was doing the right thing, practicing the, the way I've done. And then after that uh, I returned to playing in bands and, but after two years, exact same story, mm-hmm. Trolls needed vacation again, we need a sub for, for a new show with this act, mm-hmm. son would you consider mm-hmm. doing it? I would love to do it. Yeah. And that was my introduction to, to, to play more seriously with Jan because after that he started. He was doing a lot of, of TV stuff. Mm-hmm. The Danish version of Letterman Show with mm-hmm. Michael Meyerheim yeah. and uh, the Danish version of uh, Don't Forget Your Toothbrush mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was, being, I was playing with him in house bands on TV mm-hmm. shows for, I think I ended up playing with him like 12 years or something like yeah. that. So that, instead of going to the conservatory, that's mm. my education. I mean, playing with the best session guys in, in Denmark, bagging different acts who are coming on the TV shows mm. and they want to present new album, new single, new mm. whatever. Uh, so we did, we did a lot and maybe we could do two TV shows in a day. In the morning we were playing jazz with some of the 
jazz names in Denmark, and in the evening we were afternoon we were playing rock with uh, San Salmons or Thomas Helmi, or so it was a lot of, of different styles going on. So that's that's my education. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember once hearing you. Uh, talk about going on tour with Linje 3, mm-hmm. that's an uh, entertainment act that was going on for a long period touring all Denmark, making loads of gigs, and not to try to fall into repeating yourself, yeah. you actually decided to, to do something. What could you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was fun because the way I'm brought up is mean you have to practice, you have to study hard if you want to be good at something. Mm-hmm. Still, you're also supposed to have fun and enjoy mm. life, but mm. you you really you're supposed to work hard, and therefore, I thought this is this is a fantastic opportunity to learn the music mm. business and learn music, mm. and uh, I was just excited. Mm. But a lot of friends said, "But isn't it boring to play mm. the same repertoire, the same mm. songs for like the last show I did with them? We played tenth month in a row, so it was like two hundred shows." Yeah. And one, we had one day off every week, and I think it was in that period where we also did TV shows on the day we had off. So it was kind of busy. But but to return to, to your question, sorry, um, when I played the songs, some of the material was mm. pretty hard, mm. and there was a lot of reading going on and some fun stuff, uh, different parts. And some of the stuff were more, more like doom, 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 mm-hmm. playing straight, so it, it maybe it wasn't that challenging. But then I thought, every time I felt something was boring, mm-hmm. I have to invent some way to make it difficult. Mm-hmm. Either I should play chords that I'm not forced to play, or I must not uh, think about how I would play the chords in a new zone of the guitar mm-hmm. without being before we were on stage. Yeah. So I said, okay, next song is this. Oh, that's the boring one, but I, now I have to play it within these three frets on the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, play. Mm-hmm. So I tried to, every time I th- was about to be feel bored, I tried to make talent for myself. Yeah. So I was learning something new every time I went on, on, on stage. And that's one of your philosophies uh, working. I th- at, at, at least I, I wasn't bored mm-hmm. uh, and and I could have chosen to just play the same way every every night but yeah. I mean whoa mm-hmm. I, uh, I thought no this is my opportunity to learn to yeah. grow to, yeah. to, to, to develop my playing uh, and sometimes uh, I remember the drummer he suddenly realized suddenly he came over to me and said Soren is it true that you're playing something new every mm-hmm. night yeah. uh, I said yeah mm-hmm. Also, the outro mm-hmm. league mm-hmm. in a really mm-hmm. difficult song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And then he left, and next day we were playing, and then we were getting to this part, mm-hmm. and always speeding up a mm-hmm. bit, so I was yeah. supposed to play my new yeah. difficult country league. Yeah. And then he looked me straight in the eyes and said, Okay, I'm it really is, moving ahead, so it go for it, go okay. for it, Tom. good luck. <laughs> and if I managed, he was like, mm-hmm. Tomorrow I'm speeding even yeah. more up. And if I didn't manage, he was like, I won today, and then I said, I really so have to practice. Break, don't, yeah. So, so it was a way to keep the tension going. Exactly. And, that's a good so it, yeah. and it was great fun, and we had a, and, but the whole, the whole, that period was really inspiring because when we were touring a lot, I mean, many of the days you didn't have time to practice, like mm-hmm. not back in the days when no. I was for the seven weeks holiday, it was definitely not the same. Mm-hmm. But then again, when we were warming up, I was sitting with some killer musicians mm-hmm. and every time I was interested in if I heard Lars playing something difficult on the bass mm-hmm. I said what what what's that you're playing how come it sounds different from what I'm hearing oh it's, it's because and then I've also always been asking a lot mm-hmm. and it and then uh, he said it's because I'm trying to do this 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 and mm-hmm. I try to get this feeling or this mm-hmm. phrasing or whatever and I said, how should I translate that to guitar mm-hmm. How could I do that? And then maybe the next day I was sitting next to the drummer warming up said, I can hear it, mm. 16th note, mm. but what are you playing? Oh, I'm t- playing everything in sections of five or seven mm. or whatever. I said, it's not possible on guitar. And then I realized, oh, if I should do it, mm. how should I do mm. it? And that way, I, every day I tried to play something I couldn't play. Mm. And suddenly I realized, oh, actually, I'm 
growing more as a musician this way by practicing 20 minutes, mm-hmm. something I can't do, instead of being back home practicing for three or four hours, something that I mm-hmm. almost can do, mm-hmm. repeating the same mm-hmm. I did day, the day before, yeah. the day before. So I was, I was growing much more as a mm-hmm. musician this mm-hmm. way, and it was much more fun. Yeah, and playing guitar is what's fun for you. Yeah. That's what you're in it for. Yeah. I mean, when we're going on holiday, I bring my guitar. Mm-hmm. If my wife thinks, oh, so on, mm-hmm. you seem a little grumpy. Sh- mm-hmm. Shouldn't you play some guitar? Oh, she's a <laughs> uh, Or, uh, and, and if I've been in the studio for like eight, ten hours a day, mm-hmm. maybe editing some stuff, mm-hmm. or maybe recording a certain piece, or mixing mm-hmm. or something. When I get home, my kids are asleep, and everybody's sleeping, and I say, oh, now it's time to relax. Mm. Then I pick up my guitar and practice for three hours before I go to sleep. I mean, it's some people run, some people swim mm. or yoga. Yeah. <laughs> to me, this is yoga. Yeah. That's how you mm. relax. Yeah. But you played with Jan Glesel for mm. uh, 12 years and then Sometimes you decided yeah. to stop. It was a big decision. Mm. I mean, playing with him was so inspiring and it's uh, so many good memories. But also I thought... Oh, I have so many ideas that, uh, of course, he had to take decisions. When you have a deadline, mm-hmm. he was the, the guy in charge. And I said, oh, I'm, I have so many ideas. There's so many things I want to check out. And I was booked for many sessions where I was, I cannot keep quiet. Mm-hmm. So, um, so uh, that means that I had always suggestions. Why did you play this on drums or could you play this on the bass or whatever sometimes it was good and developing sometimes I felt oh I better better be quiet Mm -hmm. but I felt I want to sing Mm -hmm. so I decided now I want to go the whole way um, all in so I decided to to quit Mm -hmm. and try for myself and that way I could make the decisions and be Mm -hmm. in charge and then I quit uh, or I talked to Jan and he said oh Maybe you could take a year off mm-hmm. and consider what you're doing. And then it's a good idea. And then two weeks later, I was asked to be musical director on, on another TV show. Mm-hmm. And I had to put my band together and do that. And we did a season of that show, mm-hmm. family program. Uh, and then while I can't remember if it ended or mm-hmm. while it was uh, close to, to ending, then I was asked to be a musical director on another show, and it ended up being a really, really uh, successful uh, formula on, on Danish TV. And actually, the the formula was I was part of the team developing mm-hmm. ideas and games for the show, mm-hmm. as well. And actually, the show was sold to I can't remember how many countries. So at that time, I also was sent the French version of mm-hmm. the show and. Do you have any comments on, yeah. on it? Or we went to Norway or Sweden to meet the guys making it there and they were using my music and my music was sold for the Chinese version of the mm-hmm. show and, and stuff. That it, was, it was a really f- great experience and it was, I was learning so much and I was in charge. So I could, I could, if I had any ideas, I could live them out or I could make room for the mm-hmm. guy in the band said, any suggestions? Mm-hmm. Come, 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 come. And then it was just, okay, we have to make a decision Five, five minutes till we start recording. Now I decide, mm-hmm. else I try to make room for everybody. Uh, um, if you're wondering, what's the name of this TV oh, yeah. program? The name in Danish is Den Store Klasifist. And the names around the world, you have to Google, because I don't really know. <laughs> the big That's class a lot. reunion, yeah. I think it, the, the big class reunion. The big I, class reunion. I, I, I think, yeah. I'm not sure. No? And, and, and Could be a good name. I'm not sure on, on mm. the Chinese version, at least. No. <laughs> Uh, you did uh, Classifist for three. I, I did it for three seasons. Uh, I learned so much. It was really interesting, really inspiring. Um, but suddenly one night I realized, okay, uh, I think it was uh, when I was playing with, we were having Shaka Khan on the show mm-hmm. the day after. Suddenly I realized, okay, before I go to sleep, I better look on the guitar part and prepare that for tomorrow. Pretty cool. And, and Chuck God. Come the next day and you were like... Yeah, and, and, and that that's made me think because I said, back in the days when I was starting doing all this, I would have been prepared for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and I would have practiced the numbers we were supposed to play on the show. With my approach, I would have checked out other songs and learned that just to show respect and maybe yeah, somehow interact with, with, with the artist. And here was like, oh, before I go to sleep, I better check out the parts I'm supposed to play tomorrow morning. I realized I'm playing guitar 10, uh, 10 times within these three or four months we're using for, for this uh, season of, this, of the show. And that's the 10 times we are recording. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm playing guitar a little bit the day before. That's it. And I started all this because I loved playing guitar and that was my dream. And suddenly I realized that's the thing I do. Yeah, yeah, I do it so little, so, so, oh, so little is, yeah, and the least. Um, so I decided maybe it's time to, to reconsider what I'm mm -hmm. doing. And uh, then I quit. And everybody was, mm -hmm. you're quitting a success? Mm -hmm. How come? Mm -hmm. it, it, it just feels natural or yeah. like the right decision at that time. And of course I miss mm -hmm. part of that, that game and it was, it was quite fun to do. But then I decided it would, it's time for something new. So you ran into quite a few uh, well-known, mm -hmm. well-respected uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. Who were you playing with? Level 42, uh, uh, David Sanborn was some of the guests on, 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 on the class reunion. Yeah. With Glazel it was like uh, Robert Palmer, Randy oh, Crawford. Yeah. Uh, the things I did with Jan started making some, uh, at, making me able to write some, some serious name on, on mm -hmm. my CV. And then, I mean, it's... It's the first two or three international known names that's mm. the difficult one yeah. to get. The more you play with, the more respected you get because, yeah. oh, you played with Shaka or David yeah. or whatever, yeah. then then everything is cool. Yeah. But uh, was that easy? Did did, they, uh, did he turn up with his saxophone and uh, you just played and then he left again? Or did you uh, have a chance to meet with, uh, as a musical director? Normally with, with these kind of artists, they have a, a musical director on... Mm on their uh, side uh, yeah. and so a lot of the com communication is through those mm -hmm. and uh, and of course they have a manager who is making a pretty long list with mm -hmm. demands and that way when when the artist shows up and is really easy going it's mm -hmm. oh so relaxing yeah. because it's it's just a matter of everything's prepared for the artist yeah. i mean some of those artists who are really respected and well-known and know their things and they're yeah. good at what they're doing, yeah. they just want to have fun. Yeah. Exactly the same thing as, as I want as a player and yeah. you want when you're playing yeah. music, we want to have fun. Yeah. So that means that they are, they're just having, oh, I mean, remember the same when he came over and said, mm -hmm. just go ahead, play yeah. some fills, but there are no guitar fills on, yeah. on, the, on the record there. Mm -hmm. No, but we're supposed to have fun. Okay, okay cool. <laughs> so I mean, it, it and and still that was quite new for me at mm -hmm. that time. But but I realized, okay, I'm supposed to have fun. I'm trying to have fun. Yeah. But but again, it's also difficult difficult because if you're a musical director, you're mm -hmm. also in charge of the engineering, uh, or the communication with the engineering mm -hmm. and the sound stage guys and everybody. You're in charge of so many things. Mm -hmm. So in part. It's just a small part of yeah. playing guitar and having fun. And I missed that. Yeah. I wanted that to be a big part of my life again. So. And that's why you quit and went out in the real world. What happened then? I moved to New York for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was quite interesting to move there for a day because in Denmark, if, if I heard a Danish act and I went over and mm -hmm. said, Oh, I heard you play tonight. It was really good. Oh, mm -hmm. did you like it? What yeah. part? Yeah. And then we started, would start communicating yeah. at at the instantly when I moved there and went up to the bands afterwards mm. and said oh it was a nice group we played mm. oh great thank you yeah uh, and I liked the part you played in yeah. the third song yeah. oh great thank yeah. you mm. and everything stopped there mm. and it took me a while I said is, is this something wrong yeah. do I smell <laughs> bad yeah what, what what's happening yeah. and then one day I went up and I was like just about to say mm -hmm. hello to a, to a musician, and then there was another one right in front of me. Yeah. Said, oh, I'm playing with this act, and he was uh, selling him, himself in a really selling way. Yeah. Uh, and the drummer was yeah. talking a lot and saying, 
now I'm doing what's absolutely not common in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So I was really brave and I said, hey, my name is Soran. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been musical director on TV for Sandborn, mm -hmm. Shaka Khan, mm -hmm. and Level 42, and uh, yeah. I really liked your playing in, in the first song. Oh, oh. you did? <laughs> Who? How come you've been playing yeah, yeah, musical yeah, yeah. director, or where do you know Sandborn from, mm -hmm. or what, whatever? Yeah. Then they wanted to communicate, yeah. but it was just like, I like your playing, okay, great, yeah. thank you. I need so a you had to be a car salesman. At least I, I realized yeah. that it, it's it, it's important to yeah. to to uh, stand up when when yeah. when you when you're over there. So that's not a typical Danish approach when we are that very much you know not making too much fuss about ourselves. No. No. So being a shy guy from the countryside, a mm. Dane mm. over there. Mm bad combination and, yeah. and at least you have to learn something yeah. and figure out did you learn yeah but it's mm. still it's not uh, it's still it, it uh, doesn't feel right no, uh, no. you know it's it's it feels like i'm bragging when yeah. ever to every time <coughs> I, I do it but uh, i try to remember it's also why i bring it up here mm. because i think actually it's an important knowledge for to know for for young musicians coming up yeah. that it's not f in in their eyes, it's not bragging. No. It's just okay. It's information. Yeah, yeah. That's you need to know information. information. Yeah. yeah. Who am I talking yeah. to? Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. So I moved to New York, and then I returned back, and I did some TV shows again, and then did some sessions, and um, I was asked to produce some uh, s different albums and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and then uh, I was invited to play a tour with. Uh, uh, a band from Jutland, Northern Denmark. Yeah. Uh, they were doing some Christmas shows. And I was saying, hmm, wonder what the, what's that going mm -hmm. to be? And then before <coughs> we did that, it was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And then they said, but we have another tour with an American keyboard player called David Garfield. Mm -hmm. I said, I know that name. Mm -hmm. Where do I know that name from? I, I couldn't figure out, but said, it sounds it sounds like <laughs> great fun. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then they sent me some lead music and sheet music, and then I checked out the, the tracks. And then we went to rehearsal, and David here arrived and said mm. hello to everybody. I said, no, I don't want to play that. Uh, I brought, brought some new scores, and he passed out the scores. And then he said, let's start with, he named the songs, and mm. I don't think I know that. And then he started playing, and said, I know that song, because that's from my favorite album from the album I've been listening the most to for, for the sounds, the inspiration, mm. and it's Luca that is playing on that. So I know that song. It's on that album. And then I look on the, on the sheet music and they say David Garfield in the corner. Said, he wrote that song. And then I realized, okay, he's part of the band that's been my favorite. And I wasn't aware of that before we started. So uh, I was really, it was a great uh, moment for me to realize that. And that also meant that when he started playing, he said, oh, I can play some fills here, talking about David mm -hmm. Sambon. Yeah. He's supposed to have fun. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm comfortable here. Mm -hmm. And the moment I started playing mm -hmm. some at lips that wasn't yeah. written in the scores, mm -hmm. David, he looked up and he smiled. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he went over to me. Oh, Sean? Sean? Is it Sean? Yeah. That's uh, need to know information. Yeah. yeah. And said, so, sounded good, bro. Yeah. Bro? Bro? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, on all the, all the gigs we played, he said, "Oh, son, we're supposed to play more together." Mm -hmm. And I said, "It would be a dream." Yeah. And then, then I was, yeah, he's probably mm -hmm. just saying mm -hmm. that. And then uh, my wife, after some years, where I've been wishing him happy birthday mm -hmm. or uh, Merry Christmas, mm -hmm. and uh, he wrote back, "Merry Christmas mm -hmm. to you," she said, "How come you don't invite David to come mm -hmm. and play with your band?" Yeah. And then I uh, called him. I said, "It's Sean from Denmark." Mm. Sean, bro, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember me? And yeah. um, I said, "I'm doing good." Mm. Um, I wonder if you would come play at the Copenhagen Jazz Festival with my band. Mm. I would love to, or I can bring some friends. I think I thought friends is just bringing friends like this crowd. <laughs> oh, Sean gives you free free bar, just have fun. Yeah. Or what? What do you mean? So I, I write a list, and then he wrote a list with some mm. killer musicians. And uh, he said, I can play with your band, or I can bring some friends. What do you prefer? Mm. Can I play with these guys? 
I, I go for your solution. Yeah. And then... Uh, Can they, I tell that uh, the album with Garfield is an album that he's been making with a musician from Toto, yeah. Steve Lukather and uh, the brothers and so on. Uh, what was the name of the band? Lost Lobotomies? Yeah. If you don't know, I'll write it in the, the links below. It's a killer album for... It's a musician's album, but it's so great, man. Mm -hmm. And then um, then we were supposed to play in the jazz festival and, and, and another gig, and the other gig was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And I was so embarrassed and said, David, mm -hmm. the, the second gig is cancelled the day before. What, mm -hmm. what should we do? Uh, do we want to go to Tivoli Gardens mm -hmm. or Nyhavn mm -hmm. or see Copenhagen? We came to play. Uh, <laughs> so we are going in the studio. Mm -hmm. Studio, what are we going to play? You must have some music. Yeah. We're going to the studio. We're coming to play with you. So have some music ready and we're going into the studio. Okay. <laughs> and then I had to write some scores and then, uh, yeah. hey, call the yeah. engineer. Can, I, can we come to your studio? And, yeah. and then that was actually the start of how my second album started because I made one album after the first uh, after the first tour with David where I realized if he's making a living mm -hmm. of playing this kind of music I want to make an album mm -hmm. and then I made the first one and invited him to play that yeah so this was the start for the second album recording with Will Lee on bass Steve Ferroni who played with Eric Clapton and uh, Duran Duran yeah <laughs> as well killer lineup yeah. and there was just we are, we are going to the studio with you and say, how many songs do you do? You, do you think we can record? Mm -hmm. How many songs do you want yeah. us to record? Yeah. And then I had five songs ready, and we could have recorded ten. I mean, yeah. it was it was killing. It was just, and I I I had really serious lesson there because that was the first time I met Steve Ferroni, mm -hmm. and I passed out all the sheet music, yeah. and then uh, they were having fun and oh, it's good to be in Denmark. Mm -hmm. It's good to be mm -hmm. in the studio and talking and saying, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then I talked to him and said, okay, Steve, uh, should we try? And he was like, getting an electric shock. <laughs> try? try? Shouldn't we just do it? <laughs> and he was like, okay. oh, this is serious. Yeah. It's not, we're not trying, we're not rehearsing, yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. And he did it. Everything is first takes. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. It's killing. And then um, we played that gig and David again said, oh, I want to play more with mm. you. I said, this is a dream come mm. true. Mm. And the other guys in the band said, oh, when do we play again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and then they went home and then David called me th two or three days later and said, oh, I have this jazz festival in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. Do you want to play? Yeah. Okay, because if you want to play, I, I asked the guys to come. And then we met in, in Bulgaria and played again. And that way I started really to connect with David and, mm -hmm. and every once in a while I went. Then they said, now you have to come to LA and play with us because yeah. it's your turn to have jet lag when we're yeah. playing and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's how I was in, into, uh, invited into yeah. this American community of mm. killer musicians yeah. and, and um, ended up playing with a lot of musicians that I only read about on, yeah. on covers when I was when I got my guitar, Les Paul Deluxe, and dreamt about, oh, imagine... But how do you approach that as, as a person, meeting new musicians of that uh, caliber? First, when, when, when you get the gig, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when you're thinking, oh, it's tomorrow, mm -hmm. then you can feel, oh, it's actually us. Also a bit nerve-breaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you meet... Those kind of musicians are so ready or used to meeting new people and are so easy going. So within seconds, it's like, oh, your best friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's part, a part of being a su successful sideman or musician mm -hmm. or artist is also being a good hang. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, uh, that, that you're having fun and mm -hmm. that you're relaxed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some of those guys are the most they are the sweetest, most politeful, most helpful. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Haslip, who is a killer monster guitar player mm -hmm. playing with, with the Yellow Jackets for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been fortunate to play with, some, with him and in, in the studio with him or two. And, and I remember hearing him order a cup of coffee and the waitress forgot a spoon. Mm -hmm. And the way he, sorry, I'm really, 
is it possible somehow that I'm really, really to get a spoon for this because actually I want to add some sugar. He was so polite that he could be, do you know what? I've yeah. been yeah. flying here, I have jet lag, mm. I'm related. He was so polite and said, oh, this is really mm. easy going. And I mean, they're so good in, in doing that part of the business as yeah. well. So it's, of course, I was, I mean, the first time I went to LA and I was, I was realizing in a few hours, I'm going to meet with the guys mm. and I'm going to meet guys I never met before mm. that just returned from Whitney Houston or mm. session with whoever. Um, of course, I was nervous. Mm. And then when I met them, it was just, oh, mm. hey. Yeah. Um, and again, it was like uh, David, is, he, in, maybe in, he introduced and said, this is mm. Soren, this is Ricky, this is mm. Soren, this is Lenny. And it was a like, hello, Soren. And then it was just like, when I was in New York, I said, hi, hello, I think you, mm. thank you. They said, hello, mm. and then preparing. And then when we played, and we played the first set or first show, if we mm. were doing two shows a night, then the return said, what was your name, Soren? Oh, really? <laughs> good to meet you. We're going to play yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like, they're meeting so many friends yeah. or so many colleagues. Yeah. Maybe they're playing again, maybe not. No. And, and he's, oh, good to meet you. And yeah. then if they say, oh, we probably meet more, then mm. then you know it's next, uh, yeah. next level. So Everything uh, started getting interesting with the connections to LA. And suddenly also I wanted to raise a family. Mm. I met my wife and we decided to have kids. And that interfered in a whole other way because yeah. suddenly I was prepared to, oh, I want to go to LA every second month mm -hmm. and I want to do this and want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then we also should have a family and oh, it's going to be great. And everything was good and seemed well planned till I sat with my daughter yeah. and she was like 10 minutes old and I was sitting there and said, I can't leave her. This, no, <laughs> I mean, this is serious. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the, all the other stuff is fun, it's mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. but this is serious, this yeah. is life. Uh, and therefore I decided uh, to, to change the whole uh, thing for a period. So I started writing books and mm -hmm. started to work more from home. Uh, so I've, I've written five books. Mm -hmm. I did a sample library mm -hmm. uh, for native instruments. I did, I've done a lot of different things. So I had different legs for yeah. making some kind of income. Now when the kids are like older, mm -hmm. now they don't care about it. No. If if I'm away, first time I went to Canada to play and I called back home, mm -hmm. oh, I miss mm -hmm. you and I, now I've been away for two days. Mm -hmm. You have? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they they didn't realize. So no. so now they're, they're big. It was just, it's nice to, to have a quiet home and then not yeah. hearing dad practicing guitar. So it's... But you, are, do you then you had a, a full job, a full time job. Yeah, for the first time during that period, I also uh, first like a substitute on a, on a school. I was uh, hired to teach guitar, and mm. then again while I was there, I couldn't keep my mouth shut, so I started talking about composing, producing, mm. stuff like that, and the new trends mm -hmm. uh, for the young youngsters. And then I was hired to establish a songwriter and producer course for mm. the school. And I was in charge of that for eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And then, then it was about the kids starting to be yeah. bigger. And every time I talked to my wife about, oh, I miss the days where I could mm. go to LA or travel somewhere. Did you play guitar at all at that time? Could you do that? Yeah, a little, but it was not the same. And mm. I mean, I released two albums while, while I was working at the school. So. Mm. So yes, I, I did, mm -hmm. but not the mu as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was fun, and I thought really it was giving to, again, just like I met people who was just sharing knowledge. Mm -hmm. I could share all my experience to all the young students there. So it really made sense. Mm -hmm. And I loved that job, and I thought it was inspiring. But at the same time, I started missing more in the days playing guitar mm -hmm. and just being called for a session or a gig or something mm -hmm. like that. And then, uh, and then uh, I talked to my wife and she said, maybe it's time to, to do something else because every time I ask you, why don't you go mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. NAMM? Why don't you go mm -hmm. to LA? Why don't you go to whoever you're connected to? Mm -hmm. 
the answer was always, I don't know the schedule for the next mm. half year. So maybe, she said, maybe that's a sign, Sarah. And You've then, got a clever wife, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I decided, okay, it's a big step, but I've done it before, so I'm quitting. Mm. And then I quit, and now it's three years ago I, I stopped mm. at, the, at that, and focusing more on playing guitar, doing some tutorials, mm -hmm. tutorial videos, and uh, I have my next album in the making. Mm -hmm. And I've this year I've been to Norway playing concerts, doing guitar camps, workshops, mm -hmm. clinics. And I'm doing some guitar camps here as well. And I can do some sessions back home. Mm -hmm. It's it's really a privilege to live in your own place and people yeah. send you files and you can record that. And uh, also been to Holland to play with a, a, a group of musicians down there who is uh, their job is to tour with international acts in, yeah. in Europe, so and they invited me to come play mm -hmm. with them. It was a really good experience and killer musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see that's the direction I'm moving mm -hmm. at now, and it, it feels really, really good. I feel really privileged to, to, to be able to, to start being a guitar player again for maybe the third time or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you started a YouTube channel yeah. and uh, trying to pass on some of the things you learned as a guitarist. Mm -hmm. uh, how's that going? You've got a Danish and an English channel and uh, there's links to them in the description <laughs> below. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? I think it's it's it makes sense for me to share knowledge that way because mm -hmm. I've experienced that from my childhood. My dad who just mm -hmm. shared all his experience about art mm -hmm. and uh, just like the trumpet player Thais who mm. invited me, or Jakob who said, oh, come and drink coffee. Mm. It's natural for me to share uh, knowledge mm. and just, uh, I'm here because uh, you want to share knowledge mm. and you want to mm. share uh, views on life and experience as well. And yeah. I think it's, it's, it's important to do mm. that. Um, and I think it's great fun. It's a lot of work, yeah. man. <laughs> Yes. You know how much know. Uh, yeah. preparing cameras, yeah. Uh, yeah. the sound, everything. There's yeah. so much work in yeah. five minutes. Mm. But I mean, uh, it, it was the same when I did TV and we did one show every mm. Friday night. Yeah. My mom asked, what do you do the rest of the week? Yeah. <laughs> I'm preparing, I'm writing, arranging course, music yeah. in meetings, mm. uh, developing games, developing mm. whatever. Mm. But it's an, only an hour. Mm. I mean, here you're doing an hour show. Yeah. It takes a lot of research, it takes yeah. a lot of technical yeah. Yeah. knowledge to do, so it takes a lot of time, so the curve is I'm not posting every second day or no. every week, it's going up and down. Yeah, it's yeah. a little random, but but I think it's great fun and I, I really like the fact that you can respond to the, the people you're, you're trying to show something for, mm -hmm. they reply. And they ask, and you interact with people. Mm. I think yeah. that that's a that's a really good thing. I really appreciate. Okay, next part of my talk with Son Life is Artist Talks Nerd Alert, where we'll have a look on Son's guitars, talk about music, as well as Son will play us a song on his guitar. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you Skyhook for the support. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like if you do. You're welcome to leave a comment or a question below. See you in the next episode and remember to take your time to listen to other people's stories. You might learn something new. See you.